and that. I must have got three of them. You have these little sets here? Yeah. Well, this is a pretty big type set. You see this? You thing. may not realize it, but this this capital holder. Mm -hmm. I bet you this sells for fifty dollars empty. That's fun to just put on the wall, isn't it? That's what it's made for. I bet at your house you have at least one of these on the wall. No. You don't? Yeah. No. I have better than this in the carrier. This is oh. too... To me, it's, you know... You got better stuff. Yeah, you know, I got cool stuff. Okay. Because I got pictures of me on the wall. Ah. Aside from that. One day, guy, you got to show us some of your, like, private secret collection. Private Maybe not the secret, whole thing, but, like, a couple little odds and ends. Guy, listen, while I'm here... Let's do a video for the people for the YouTube. That Christ sounds good. Christmas is coming. Well, hello everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. It's been a busy week for me. Last week was really busy. I did the Great American Teaching last Wednesday with the little Darlings, and they were fun. It was good. Uh, they gave me six graders, and when you get them, they called, they told me before that I was gonna have to take double classes. Now, I don't know if that means I didn't have enough teachers. I don't know, but I think this is the first time I've had double classes. And they told me it's gonna be in the media room. So this big kid, he takes me upstairs, and I said, where's the media room? And he take me to a room and I look around and I said, when I was a kid, this was called the library. See all the books on the walls? That's what gives it away. So this is the library. And they got a couple of computers you can talk on, but 90% of the room was books. But that's where I was. Nice big room. And then he started bringing in the children. I had 200 kids. 200 kids. Were you worn out at the end of the day? I couldn't take the last class. <laughs> I told them. I told them by lunchtime. I said, I hate to tell you I'm not going to do the last class. I can't. I, last time they gave me six classes and I was exhausted. I just can't stand on my feet like that anymore. And to be honest with you, that room, I had classes of about 40 kids, 25, 40, 45. You could put 100 in there. It's the same. I'm giving the same talk whether there were 20 or 100 in the room. So I'll talk. I don't mind having all the kids. You should just jam I back ran, in there. I ran out of stuff to give them. I had to call Tara at lunchtime and have her come down with more stuff to give away. I had 200 kids. Hold on. You're giving them your knowledge and you're giving them free stuff too? I'm giving them free stuff. I like the kids. Come on, man. It was, <laughs> uh, it was good. It was fun. What a nice guy. I, uh, I enjoy the children. I, I do. They, they make me smile. And I was tell, and he didn't fall for it. I was telling him I was doing the music awards and said that that skinny girl called Taylor something, <laughs> and the girls just stared at me. I'm only kidding. That they were going to attack me. That's funny, guy. When I came in the shop today, I had, there's a lady here, and she was selling a lot of uh, ninety percent like silver. Ninety percent silver. She wanted gold, couldn't carry it all. And I said, I am here to please you. So let's do some trade a route. So it was a trade? Yeah, it was a trade. Okay. 90 straight up. But now the holidays are coming. Mm -hmm. Are people coming in selling all kinds of stuff to you? Oh, God. Last couple of days, you got a combination of the holidays coming, uh, tax season. Everybody's been getting their tax bills on the houses. Uh, and then just life, you know, Bidenomics. You know, the cheapest thing this year has been the turkeys. I did good on a turkey. I'm going to Tara's for dinner but I had to buy the turkey. So that set me back eight bucks, oh, man. but I could do it. Yeah. I found the money, I scraped the bottom and I could do it. For eight bucks, huh? Eight bucks, Winn-Dixie. Wow. They have 49 cents a pound for turkey. Oh, you beat me. And see, I'm looking at all the turkeys and all they had were little turkeys, but half the turkeys didn't have tags on them. So I'm eyeballing them and I grabbed one, which I think was a big, everything else was 13, 14 pounds. I brought it up to the guy in the meat department 16 and a half pounds. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, that was a deal. That's great. Yeah, I grabbed that. Guy. But people were having problems, yeah. You're going to cook the turkey yourself? No, Tara's going to cook She's it. She's going to cook it, okay. I might come over in the morning. I'll see if they want. I'll start the, we'll start the stock, um, make a nice broth stock. I use that because I make fresh gravy when I get there later in the day. We'll make the gravy with that. You use it for your stuffing. 
uh, it's turkey stock. I mean, it's the real deal. The real so. deal. I'm gonna make my turkey this year, and I got some sage and some rosemary and some yeah. thyme. I'm gonna shove that right up the turkey's keister. Is that mm -hmm. the right thing to do? You know, as a professional cook, they tell you not to stuff the turkey. Oh. But you gotta cook it a little longer just to make sure. The Board of Health has a problem if you make stuffed turkeys commercially because you're not gonna get a true temperature in the middle mm. because of that. So you gotta cook a little longer. I'm not worried about stuffing it because I'm making I'm making a separate stuffing. My wife likes apricot stuffing. I'm gonna miss out on the flavor though if I don't stuff it up the yeah. keister. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to do the uh, and if you only have chicken gravy, the trick is like you said, you add some sage to chicken gravy, it tastes like turkey. Really? That's the trick to make turkey gravy. Now this is what I traded right here on the coin show. You found out how to make different kinds of gravy. Yep. So this is what you just got. I traded this for two gold uh, maples. All this for two pieces of gold. For two ounces of gold, I got a oh, lot. Goodness. I can't pick that thing up. Probably, I don't know, 15 pounds here. But see, this illustrates. God, I'm scared. 14 and a half pounds. Take off a little for the tray, but about 14 pounds. But this illustrates when you got people, I had somebody in who was just starting out and they were telling me, you know, what do I do? <coughs> and I gave them the lowdown on silver and gold and I said, depends how much you're gonna put in. I mean, if you're gonna invest $5,000 and just go with silver, because you're only gonna get about a little over two pieces of gold. Uh, but if you're gonna, you know, every day you're gonna, this is what, this is what the, uh, what you call them, the, uh, the prep is always say. This is what they grab. This is a hundred dollars face in dimes. Great because it's fractional. Mm -hmm. You can go, hey, I want to do this much, or I want to do like a couple little rolls. No big deal. Interesting. See, this looks like more than this, don't it? Yeah. As, as she was walking out, she's like, I can actually carry this now. Yeah. <laughs> the two ounces of gold. This is a hundred and dimes. This is a hundred and quarters. This is just an example of how flat they lay and how much they take up so much more in volume. Yeah. The same thing, of course, like I said, you get an ammunition box, six, seven hundred in this. But you can carry probably a million in gold. That stuff looks so pretty to me, guy. I love that stuff. Yeah. Woo! I've got a lot of 90% right now. But this is... Uh, People are selling, huh? As I said, you got a combination of the holidays, taxes due, insurance. Uh, we went on a cruise the other day. Me and the wife went on a dinner cruise Sunday down by the, uh, down there by the bay over off the nature coast down there in Newport Ritchie. And we're driving by beautiful homes on the water. And what a view, but I have no idea. I, those houses, some of them had to be a million dollars. And that's in Newport Ritchie prices. Uh, but what's your taxes? You have a big, beautiful three-story house next to one level. I'm looking at what I call, you know, I would say it was a cottage. It looked like six, eight hundred feet. Six or eight hundred square feet, that's all it could have been. Yeah. But you know what? I'll bet you that the uh, I'll Always bet you insurance calls. on the big house had to be fifty thousand a year. Because mm -hmm. down there you have the triple threat. You gotta pay flood insurance, hurricane insurance, uh, water damage, wind damage. It's just just incredible. You might have sinkholes over here. Yeah, they don't pay for <laughs> sinkhole anymore. No? You can't no, they won't do sinkhole. Oh, that was like when I was trying to get insurance on this, they won't give you sinkhole, and they just, you know, insurance has just gotten stupid commercially. Just absolutely stupid. So for all the tourists, stay out of Florida, because we got all these hurricanes coming through, sinkholes, our houses are just falling right to the uh, center of the earth. Yes, yeah, stay don't, there. Don't come. Stay in the <laughs> urban cities. Wear your armor when you go to the, when you go to the supermarket, if you go to Target, because if the, if the uh, swarms of thieves decide to grab everything and run, they might just run you over. Yeah. Uh, I still take my chances down here. People have been coming down here too much, man. Here's a special. Probably won't be here by the time the video comes out. What do they say? Three for a hundred. That's all That's I got. That's it? Three for a hundred. So three of these silver eagles for a hundred bucks. All right, the coin guy had to take a really important phone call, but we're back. After hours phone call, People guys. People calling me on county line, want to do some wheeling and dealing. She got to call me up to have my turkey on Thursday. I said, we'll do this Friday morning. There's always another day. Once again, wanted to sell. Yep, wanted to sell. <laughs> wanted, I got a lot of 90% now. 
That's quite cool. a bit. Quite a bit. What's well, great though? Nine 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 moving like hotcakes. As I said, we did the Great American Teach In with the kids on Wednesday, and then Saturday we had the Western End and Coin Club. We had over two hundred people through the door. Uh, it was a good show. We moved a lot of nine 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 silver. That's what we. That's what most people are buying right now. They're buying up all the nine nine nine. I got this here, which is a good doorstop. Look at that thing, huh? That thing is huge. This is a hundred ounce bar. May I? Sure. Let's see. Very slick. Yeah, this is an old bar. That bar is probably 30, 35 years old. Mm. And Love it's it. made by Tio, who went on to become a rapper. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Nobody went for that. I love the ripples they got there in that one. I'm selling this very close to melt. But you got to come in and get this. Oh, you won't ship that? Eh, we'd have to talk about that. Probably costs $25 to ship it. Then you got a credit card fee. Credit That's card cool. fee and shipping is probably $100. You did a good job on it. Let's but talk about that. these coins that you slammed that bar down onto. Now, these are what they call culls or problem coins. Okay. There's a lot of Indian head pennies here that would sell normally. I mean, that got a little spot. Uh, the nickels would have some better dates in it. They all got little problems that I consider a problem. Many of them would pass is not a problem. I'm selling these for 40 cents a piece. Um, buy them in quantity. You know, I'll, once again, I pay the shipping and the credit card on these. For instance, here's, here's, here's 200 of them. 80 bucks. Okay. You got about two thirds pennies. Um, I'm going to guess there's at least another 600 here. It's probably about 800 of them. Now, I've mentioned to you before that I've gone through piles like this of problematic or call coins, and I've found key dates. And what a, what a great idea to find a key date like this, put it into one of your albums, and it actually is a legit coin rather than have to get and a fake or something. I've of these. I mean, you've got all kinds of V-nickels here, too. Um, you know, if you got six, you got 800, what is that? 300 bucks, $325, buys them all. Winter's coming. Winter's coming. Cool stuff, guy. 1899. What's well, nice that you don't have to just throw this stuff away. Weights. You can make use of it and people I saw can these, find uh, the I, The guys who own flea markets up north, who have the uh, big antique malls and stuff, a lot of this, you know, you would see these pennies anyway at a dollar a piece somewhere else. Well, this is stuff, too, that I've noticed, like some of the old timers. Yeah. Look, they love just getting 18, a chair. 1864. Bringing it up, and they just like looking through it. So this is a key date? 1864, yeah. Nice. This is an eight ten dollars coin. That's pretty cool. It was in there. It was in there. I'm not going to say there's 10 more, but who knows? Who knows what's in there? That's the beauty of it. Very cool. Yep, this is available. As I said, winter's coming. You're looking for Christmas stockers. Let's come back to here because we kind of were interrupted a little bit. So three, three for ten bucks. For not for ten bucks. For three for a hundred. <laughs> it's been a long day. Whoa! <laughs> I'll take them all. Yeah, I'll take all those for that price. My goodness, guy. Oh. Uh, That's cool, man. I like say what you want about ICG, but they actually stack really well. Out they of, do. They slip, snap together. Out of like NGC PCGS, they've actually got a nice mm -hmm. connection. And they fit slash. in the NGC box. Who's going to know? Yeah. They'll think you got all NGC coins. Well, it's funny enough that uh, I actually have a PCGS box and uh, I put an NGC coin inside. Lid won't close. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it, it, they make all, they, they're now they've gotten sneaky PCGS where they used to fit in the NGC box. The new ones are a little too wide uh -huh. to fit in there. Yeah. So they've made it where you got to buy their box. I wish it was universal, man, to be you honest know, with you. <laughs> it's that kind of sneaky they Goodness do that. Goodness gracious. Um, now you got to have the CAC box that's, you know, specially designed for the CACs. I don't know. I'm hearing, I'm hearing all kinds of things. Nate, uh, I, you know, I hear all kinds of things about CAC. Who knows anymore, huh? Yeah. I did a lot of trading today. As I said, I traded this straight up back and forth for gold. Oh, it's Nathan. And uh, Nathan's here. I'm making a pants once in a while. That's a and nice then, shirt, uh, man. I did another trade that was 10-ounce bars.
for slabbed, like for stuff like this. We did a tree to root. But not those. These are the ones I got for NGCs and PCGS. Now I've only got about 200 of them. We'll talk about prices for them too in quantity. Nathan's like, why did you call me out here? CAC. What do you think of CAC? Oh, gosh. Horrible. Be careful. You're on tape. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> uh, I was at a show and uh, basically nine out of ten dealers basically said that they're going to break them back out and send them to other dealers. I mean, other companies. They don't like the grades. They didn't like them at all. Um, one was a really interesting one was a gentleman there had a set of uh, seated, li uh, seated Liberty dollars. And one of them was tooled. Him and I looked over that coin, gosh, for a good five minutes. And maybe in a jeweler background, I'm like, I, I'd, be, I'd be able to see some tooling marks on there. I'd find it in any way. We couldn't find anything wrong with the coin. Um, and we just kind of get back. And a lot of guys have been getting stuff back that... Um, Graded out as like an MS61 and NGC, cat graded as in 58 details cleaned. Um, it was just a lot of stuff people have been. I've heard about cat has not been as great. They're as, not liking it so far. Not not in favor of it. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. You've got so many grading companies out there. Thanks, Nate. You know, yep. reminds me of the old days when you had you had companies like this. Now I'm not saying that's CAC. Uh I know when I have a cat coin, I do pretty good on it. Um, but to get a company like this, every coin I've ever seen from this company was an MS-66. Oh, I think we talked about some of these before, yeah. right? Coin $70,000. Knack. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't have a knack for grading, I they guess. They ain't around no more. And let me tell you something. I bought about 30 of them off a guy who invested $50,000 in these. He lost his shirt. He was going to put another 200000 in. And he thanked me for he started investing in inheritance in it. MS-66. Yeah. This would be a very valuable coin. Yeah, but you, it's, oh, you have it right you? there. 77000 That's how much it was. Well, that time. That's got to be cleaned, right? Oh, it was probably. They all Every coin from this company. Yeah, this is cleaned and polished. Yeah. So they put some polish on 83, it. 83S. <laughs> it's a nice XF. But you can, if you turn it. You can see the abrasion from this cleaning. Yeah. I mean, this is a very expensive a real, high in that a real in that grade, but it. you know, when you buy these sight unseen, these you know, this is this is like one of the flea market bewares when you go there and you pick up uh, you pick up um, a bus dollar and it's got the uh, reading edges. You know, you're in trouble. Yeah. What's this uh, over here, guy? I kind of uh, snooped at this thing. As I said, I don't have much in silver dollar. I got this the other day. I picked that up. That's pretty cool. Perfect for Christmas. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you want to put a hook on it and put it on a tree. It might I was knock thinking, the tree could I, could I get a hook on this thing somehow? I don't Put a bezel around it so. maybe? Like if you had like a jeweler mm -hmm. in the shop, could put a bezel $300 on it? $300 to put a bezel on it. <laughs> and that's about what I want for it. What do you got here? I've got rolls of uh, dollars. I don't have a whole lot in the way of P. I don't have any P dollars, just uncirculated rolls. It's all gone out. This is great for the oh. uh, Christmas stockings. God, those are pretty. And there's toning right there around it. Yep. And that's just the first one. That's awesome. This is what I got left of this. What is this? Two cost? rolls of unks. What's Thousand bucks a roll. That's really good. 21s. Well, over 100 years old now. You got to talk about the credit cards. That kills you. Credit card oh. fee on this is thirty-five dollars. Mm. I bet those fees are going to go up here pretty soon. What do you think? I don't know. It's like, well, I've got people send me uh, money orders. I've turned a lot, tens of thousand dollars. I've talked to people. And they just send me money orders. The credit card fees—they ought to take me to dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. That one guy, again, it's like a hundred twenty-five, hundred forty dollars in credit card fees. So nice looking guy. So nice. I'm having a problem here. One hand to try to get the lid back on, guy. Oh, you did two hands. You cheated. I cheated. Come on. <laughs> we got some assortment here. I've got one bag of uh, pre 04s left of the Morgan dollars. They're oh. BGs to VFs. I got one bag of 100. That's it. I had 1,000. Um, I got no piece dollars loose. Is that here? Is that what these Just these piece dollars. No, I got the bag in the back. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I got plenty of 90. Um, and that's what we got. Very, as far very as that, cool. I picked up a whole bunch. I picked this up. 
He's always this picking stuff up. Today. This guy is always picking stuff up. I gotta go through this. A monster box? Today. Well, I used a monster box to carry oh. it. I invent, this is patented. It's easy to carry. I traded all of this for a bunch of 10 ounce bars. And I have hundreds of these, but I gotta go through these, so we'll can see I, what we find. Can I see some of these while we're here? 30th anniversary. Of what? I don't, of the eagle. Oh, nice. Here's a panda. This one's got a price on it. Official mint metal. Ah, the Chiwong Chiwong Wing. All right? That's his There's heck. a couple of those. <laughs> these are actually pretty cool. Is this a 70? 69? It's pretty cool. I said they go for more than eagles. Oh, yeah. Oh, the panda. I know the story about this. the clay army. This was the army they discovered underground. Oh, this, no, this is Korea. I think in China. I don't think I've seen this, this one like before. This is a treasure trove right here, guy. Yeah. I feel like I went and metal detected and I found like a big like hoard underneath the this ground. This I got to catch up on. This I bought cool. a whole, I got a call yet and do the final numbers. I got 40 pounds of uh, marked sterling rounds that came in with weights and, and purities. I got to go through all that and call the person on that. Um, I'm having fun. Good thing I'm not cooking tomorrow. Yeah, you're lucky, huh? Well, I enjoy cooking. I enjoy cooking. This is fun, just kind of going through these. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a box of chocolates, you know? Here. You just never know what you're going to get. See something like this? This just says, first strike uncirculated. No number? How come they do that? I've seen that. I don't know when they do that, really. It's like they got lazy. Yeah, like their job really is to give me a number. really needs to go with those. Hmm. I don't know what's here. Here's a brown seal. Did I just... I think they're putting it in my 30th pile 30th anniversary. Interesting. This has value. What's that? This is the 06W. This is... This is... It's probably a 60 $70 coin. Who knows what kind of treasures it's you all, have. I don't know. It's, you know, there's a lot here, and it'll keep me out of trouble. Guy, with a shop this big. Next weekend. Right? You got so much stuff. You got so much room in your shop. Do you ever set something down somewhere, and then it takes maybe like a year or two, and you go, oh, yeah. I've gone through a drawer in the back and found a roll of eagles. I don't remember putting them in there. <laughs> so I, you know, it's like the wife hears about that, and she just shakes, because they think Tara rats me out. <laughs> I remember a couple of times, like in my life, you know, I've fumbled around in my pocket and all of a sudden I find a $5 bill. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's all right. Well, I've done that where my wife says any money she finds in the, in the dryer is hers. That's funny. Now, I don't leave change usually in the dryer. You hope not. But it what else be, was there? It won't be yours anymore. You know, things in the world are going as they have been. Um, get conflict um, overseas. Uh, United States is getting more and more involved. I think a lot of people are kind of well, getting worried about that. Well, there's supposed to be some peace breaking out, but students of history will tell you that certain peoples have a reputation of shaking you, shaking your hand, and at the same time they got their fingers crossed. They'll be nice about it. Um, I, I've since I was a kid, I've heard the slogan "Peace in the Middle East." Yeah. Will, I, I'm just, I'm being a fortune teller. There will never be peace in the Middle East. No, it, it's, it's going to be conflict forever. Too much conflict and war. Yep. It's just a sad thing. I hope, I hope for them all, but it's not in the nature of some people. And I think that in some countries, uh, they find a lot of value in war. Well, there's nothing else for their people to do. I'm sorry. When you brought all those Afghans into this country, I mean, a seven-year-old gets a knife, a 12-year-old, they get a Kalashnikov. They don't grow up in those hill countries. They're a warlike people. They don't grow up wanting to be dental hygienists. What are you going to be? You're either going to be a dirt farmer or a fighter and take what you want. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Uh, and that's just, you know, we brought 50,000 of those people to this country. I don't know. Somebody out there must know what they brought. Yes, my ancestors came to this country too, but they came with skill. One was an advanced uh, metal worker, built railings in Manhattan. The other one was a butcher, a professional butcher. They were sponsored, and they had skill sets. I was a butcher when I was working at the hospital. I did butchering. I lost the end of this finger. I can prove it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> butcher. I was talking to a little guy. I said, because the little guy was playing soccer the other day, he got tackled, and two big kids fell on him, and he was showing me his, 
was more, he's Marky, and I said, I cut the finger off of this on a bandsaw. Okay, but it looks good, yeah. I said, I had thyroid cancer, and they cut my head off. See the scar? <laughs> and put it back. He's looking, he goes, you're lying. Pop Pop tells stories. He don't lie. <laughs> so he didn't believe when he cut my head off and put it back. So That's great. He's getting older now. <laughs> yeah, getting older and wiser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. Guy, let me, let me add, like, people do this all the time, I'm sure, in your shop. They, they bring in large collections, right? And uh, Three of them today. Three large collections. And I, I'm going to use myself as an example right here. I have the, uh, the type set of the classic commemorative half dollars. If I bring a set like that into you, what is the process? I, I bring the set... I say, boom, here it is. Coin guy, what are we looking at? Ah, uh, in a set like that, you've got to take the time to really look at them. I tend to buy those straight coin. There's like 42 varieties of the 1824 half dollar. You know, you can't go through all the varieties. You look for the major ones. You got to look for how many were cleaned. How many are real? You got to worry about them being real. It's a long pro. I had a guy come in today um, from a lawyer, and I told him what I get paid to do appraisals at a lawyer's office. He brought it in, and good thing he did. He had a bunch of stuff, and the money was only worth about $500. A lot of it was stuff that they bought from companies out in, in uh, New Hampshire that make a lot of money packaging things directly from the mint. You know, you can spend 5000 I bought a collection at a home that the father paid 40000 for it, and I paid 4000 Oh, no. Now, I didn't rip anybody off, but they're taking the golden Sacagawea dollars and getting bags. They get bags like this. You, too, can have this bag, but they'll buy direct bags like this. That's a 100-piece 100, 100 bag. Now, a certain company takes these, 100 of these, they're selling them at... Fourteen ninety nine a piece, uh -oh. pretty damn good profit. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're bringing in thousand piece bags. They do this for the dollars, the quarters, the halves. They do it for everything. Wow. And they clean up and they put them in pretty holders and they make them fancy looking. And most of the time, they just copper nickel coins. Yeah. And they don't have a value. I remember talking to an older person who was in a wheelchair, and I said, "Why do you do this?" He goes. I'm at the end of my life and I'm sick. And I'm up at two o'clock in the morning, I'm in pain, I'm watching TV. And I get a thrill out of opening the package. A lot of these people are lonely. And he goes, I get a thrill out of opening the package. Well, what surprise are you gonna have? You already see what you bought. You just happen to pay 10 times too much. Mm. Come to my store, I'll surprise you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I, I understand that, I, I'm the same way. I get a package even though I know what it is, or a lot of times I've forgotten what it is. I open the package, and you get that, that, that little tiny rush. And the more packages you get that day, there's some more little rushes you get. I get it's it. It's true. I get it's it. It's true. I get it. You know, you, from the United States Mint, these right here are not usually too expensive over, like, the face value. We see them sell for, like, you could, I don't know exactly, but they're going to get something for them. Yeah, they get something. They don't bother, but I got a bunch of It'd be like $125 or something like that. Or, no, I think know. they get more than that. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe that, was, like that his, was the old mint. My bad. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Oregon Quarters. That ain't going to have any value. He is Native American. Now, these go for about 2 bucks a piece. Okay. The 2012s. This bag is worth 200 Make an offer. I've never seen this stuff. You Here's the P's. Here's the D's. I just got this. The Here's the P and D of these. P's and D's and D's. I got 12, then 22. You're a poet and you didn't know it. Excuse me. Every decade. That's cool. I just like the bags. I'd pay a lot for just the little, like, canvas bags there, cloth bags. So I can I can sell you the bags. Give me the coins. Back. <laughs> I still want a buck and a half of the bag. Uh, you probably have all kinds of these bags laying around. Ah, uh, maybe no? in the back. Just like my wife says, this is my man cave. I don't know everything I got. She's right. I'm sure you've forgotten a few things here and there. Yeah, I have over the years. I have over the years. I still find them. Well, if I forgot them, I don't know where I got them. I know I just found a whole bunch of uh, tokens I got in the back. Hundreds of tokens from all over the place. Um, I don't even remember. But I know I got hundreds of them. Call me. Winter's long. We can make a deal. There's the number right there. 
And also, guy, of course, I'll put your uh, information for your store down yep. below the video in the description, but if once, that's okay with you. Once again, it is. Once again, working with the kids, I really enjoy. I've tried to do it up here in Hernando County, but nobody's, uh, you know, nobody wants to pull the trigger. And I'd like to do the high school level. Uh, I've done as far as 8th grade, 6th grade, 7th grade. I don't know. Are you sure you want to do that, man? High schoolers are crazy. Well, the little kids are more fun, but I don't know. I, I don't mind the stimulating conversation. There was an AP class. The fourth period was really good. They had good questions. They were really controlled. And there were two other teachers in the room with me. The kids overall were pretty good. Every now and then I had to yell, Yo! Everybody stares at me. They didn't know what the hell that word meant. But uh, I got their attention and calmed them down. But he asked a lot of questions about the, uh, about the uh, oil comp the oil countries in, uh, around the Gulf. And, you know, who talks like that? But you get 12-year-olds that are pretty smart. Um, you know, it's not only a fifth grader. A sixth grader knows a lot, too. Yeah. Then there are others who can't wait to get out of the class. But everybody got a whole bunch of gifts. And for those, some of those people who sent me stuff to give the kids, I gave them all out and then some. As I said, I had to open the last kids. I opened up some rolls of state quarters and gave everybody a half a dollar out of those. That's cool. I ran out of change. I ran out of money for 200 kids. Uh, I don't mind it. I just need a heads up. And I'll tell them next time, I don't mind using the media room. But just as you put two classes, I can take three. And let's do all of this in four periods instead of six. So you don't get tired and get I'm, worn out. You know, six hours <laughs> at one twenty-minute break. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if the school teachers do that long, but I was tired. For free, too. You're not even getting paid for that. No, I don't get paid. <laughs> the reward is the kids. I enjoy the youth. I enjoy the kids and the questions they ask. All right, let's talk about some cool stuff, guys. Let's talk about pre-33. Can you bring these out for me? I see, a, I see a little handful here we can, we can drag out. More than I usually have. Exactly. I don't see these all the time anymore. Let's put them on a base of silver. Oh, there you go. On a throne of silver sits the gold. These are very, these are very, very sellable. These have gone up significantly in price. Yeah. The Incuse Indian design. The Indians are always very, very. I enjoy the in the war bonnet, the ten dollar Indians. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I probably keep one of every two I see. That was the but I don't see many of them. That was the, the gentleman that made the uh, Walking Liberty half dollar, right? Okay. Same I don't person? Recall. I forget, too. And these are the... Uh, I could have made that up. These are the Liberty Heads. I'm not... As far as pre-33 goes, the Liberty Head design, probably the obverse, at least, is one of my least favorite looks. Yeah, I now, like the this, Indians. I like this a lot. I like the Indians. Two and a halves, the fives, and like I said, the tens... The tens is probably my favorite gold coin. Beyond the Saint Gardens Double Eagle. Yeah, I, I would take a ten. Well, not take it, but a ten dollar Indian is prettier to me. Really? In a high grade, yeah, it's a wow coin. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go backwards on you. I'm gonna go Saint Gardens Double Eagle first, and then the ten dollar. Hmm. See, this has got corrosion on one side. Which one? What are we talking about? This is a 1900 extra fine. It's like an $11 coin. Jeez. So if the back's got a little problem, but I bet you throw it in a holder for $4 in a box, somebody's going to buy it. Oh, yeah. 40 cents each. How can you go wrong? Let's put that, let's put that in here and let's mix let's it up. Let's leave it in there. Let's mix it up. The problem is, you know. <laughs> it isn't like this. Oh, look, this was in there now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's mix some of those up, guys. You too may find a gold coin with the pennies. <laughs> Not likely. That's great. Uh, anything else going on over here? Um, I think this is basically the same old, same old. I saw one thing cool when I was in here hanging out earlier. I saw. Yes, I saw. In the little mix it, make a deal thing here. This is a nice, nice note. Oh yeah, this is a ten dollar uh, Confederate for ten bucks. It's got some. It's got some character. I mean, for ten bucks, what do you want? Hey, it's got holes in it. It's got, but it's been around. You know. It's like you, you know? You, you got some character, you got some holes in you. you yeah. Know? You've been around. Some holes have been around. <laughs> uh, get aches and pains. Now, this is going to be a cool coin. This is one of my favorite coins. I've always wanted this. I'm excited this. about that flowing hair. The 1794. They have to make this in a reverse proof. I think the reverse proofs are stunning 
on the on the silver coins. I mean, once again, I have a lot the uh, the twenty ones, the twenty twos, the new ones they just made twenty threes, the new ones they made, the youngster proofs. Call me. I got plenty of those from the government. Hundred bucks each. Now, are they going to make? It I don't as have a reverse proof. A coin or a metal? I believe they're they're pulling back for making it a metal. They're waiting for the anniversary. They're waiting till next year, and they want to use it as the uh, the anniversary of the uh, 1794 coin. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about that one too. What about the uh, My reverse favorite. proof? Thank God. Um, uh, Morgan and Peace dollars just came out. I think they're beautiful. Yeah. I like them. And I said that in the beginning. I don't know who's in the mint, but when they made the centennial ones, the dime, the, the mercury dime, the standing quarter, the walker, they made them in gold, but they're, they're very, you know, varnished looking, burnished. They should have did them in reverse proof. I think they would have jumped off the shelves in reverse proof. Have a, you know, I'm sick and tired of the Australian coins or Canadians. Where is the pizzazz of the Americans? I see these coins from these other countries. They're beautiful. They're packaged in beautiful coins. We can't do that? I think our packaging has gotten a lot worse. I, I'm telling you. I mean, and just the, the way the coins are, they come out. They gotta have the show. You know, your research and development people, come on. It can't be all checking boxes is the reason you got the job. Well, you see some of these, uh, you know, um, coins lately from the United States Mint, and they'll be like the uh, uh, the Liberty issue that they have. Uh, I forget what it's called now, but it's like eight hundred dollars over spot for a gold coin, and it comes in a little cardboard box. You know, before a few years back, you get a wooden box and it had layers to it and stuff. Like and the O nine, yeah, the two thousand nine, the uh, high relief. My goodness, they must have kept half the half the little kids making those boxes in India and stuff yeah. busy. For six months building those boxes. Oh, the American uh, Liberty. That's what they're doing now. That's what it's called. The American Liberty coins. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you get, you pay 800 to to thousand dollars over spot and you get the cardboard box. You're paying for the, <laughs> and that's been a lot of the issues. I mean, it's just gets, and I said years ago, you can't afford, they, they issue so many commemoratives and so many coins that get, they get absolutely crazy. I remember a year, you know, if it was 50 years ago, 10 bucks, you bought the proof in the mint. I'm done. That's all it was, a proof set and a mint set. Ten bucks. Now it probably costs you 40000 to buy one of everything. Jeez. You got the proofs, the mint, and what happened to palladium? Holy cow. Took a shellacking. Took a, what a haircut. I remember selling a palladium gold coin, a palladium coin at the fun show a year and a half ago. I got 2700 for that coin. Mm. What is it, 11 now? It's bad. Palladium got massacred. Bad. Jeez. I saw the platinum has been slowly, you know, coming up a little bit. I mean, it's, it's not really recovered by any I means from years ago. I still find it hard to believe that it's half the price of gold. Less than half the price of gold. Everything I've ever read is 15 times rarer. Yeah. You know, but I, got, I actually got a couple of little platinum ingots in. I bought some platinum last week, and I already I got a 50-gram bar and a 20-gram bar. It did not last long. They went pretty quickly. Uh, what do you think about gold uh, teetering around that $2,000 mark, hitting it a couple times? I think the big boys, are, it's what I've said before. They'll say gold shows slight gains. I think it was uh, yesterday, day before. Gold shows slight gains. So $26, lady. Slight gains. You know, or they, they'll say gold slides. It's down 11 cents. I, they all got their foot in the stock market because they don't get the commissions on it. I really believe that there's bias to the metal. I mean, I remember years ago watching Joe Kernan when I used to watch that channel, and they would always, I don't, it's just a piece of metal, I don't care. And that's one thing I showed the kids because I passed around a 10 ounce bar. I said, this is physical value. Gold and silver has been money for 5,000 years. When you got to get through a border, if you got a nice diamond ring, a nice bracelet or gold coin, that paper ain't going to be worth nothing to you. You need to have the gold coin or the diamond or the big gold bracelet. Gold will always work. Yeah. That's what I said. You know, it just, you see them digging up. Uh, I was watching something on the History Channel the other day, and they were digging up, uh, what were they? The, uh, it, was in, it was in Scotland? I think it was in Scotland, or it might have been in France. 
and they were doing a, a burial mound, and they found gold uh, gold jewelry in there, 4,000 B.C.? Really? Holy cow! I, I think that's what they had said, or they misspoke. That predates the Egyptians, more or less. It's getting close. It's, it's out, but you know what? It was made of gold. And the work on it was beautiful. The, the carving on it was beautiful. Hmm. And it still looks like gold. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was the thing about the Celtics, the Celts, not the Celtic, the Celts. You know, I found that interesting. I learned That's super from interesting. that. Yeah. That's awesome. And now I'm talking the basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Celtics. Yes. These are the Celts. The Boston. Hey, uh, what's going on here, guy? It's I can't keep another another video down, and we don't got any peace dollars in no there. No peace dollars. I can't I can't on, keep man. them in the store. They don't come in. They don't come in. A peace set comes in. Are people just holding them? Oh, they had to sell them. Oh. I've already moved them. They must be squeezing them. I mean, I got very little. I actually put the the two the two thirty fives you see in here. I just put these in there. I found them in my box. It's a nice twenty one. That's it. I love the toning on this Everything one. else is in tubes. 22, 3, 4, 5. How do you get the thing out of there, guy? On the side. Oh, geez, on the side. This, okay, I gotcha. That's cool, man. We did not sell any really rare coins at the show. Uh, we moved a lot of the 999 bars. I think I sold about 300 ounces of that. Um... We sold a few coins, maybe a dozen odd coins, mostly bullion. I didn't bring any gold because I don't need to go to a big show to sell gold. I have clientele here. Uh, but I got to see a lot of people. I sold a couple of shirts, sold a couple of rounds, gave away a couple of shirts. When you buy $3,000 worth of bullion off of me, I'll give you a shirt. That's just who I am. I'm big about that. <laughs> You're such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. What about the uh, fun show there in, uh, what, January? I've got a bunch of stuff set up. I've already got a room. We've already took a three-bedroom room for the uh, right over there by the fountains in uh, in Orlando. So I've got uh, Nathan and the gang, and Brian can come stay. I took a three-bedroom place. So I got a suite for a couple of days, and uh, I will be there Thursday for a few hours. Then we got to do whatever we're going to do, and maybe I'll be there Friday, but Thursday I'll be there. I'm, in th I'm intending, as I've told you before, next year I'm going to go to a five-day week. I'm going to be closed on Wednesdays. So I think when we close for Christmas, the last day we'll be open will be the 23rd. And I don't think I'm going to open again until after fun. So probably around the, um, whatever that is, around the 8th. Whatever. Well, let me check my new calendar. <clears throat> and when you open up, you're going to go to that four-day week. From It'll there. be a five-day week. Five-day week, okay. I'll be closed Wednesdays. We will be open on the 8th. We'll close the 23rd of, just, of uh, December, open on the 8th. Your new calendar, huh? Yeah. I'll I heard be these around were a big deal. The What's the story's year, guy? What are these things? I don't know. Nice. This will get me on. I don't know what they put on there. <laughs> This is the web. This will get me to the website. This will get you to the YouTube. All right, watch this. I pay for this. They do all the rest. Watch this. How do you use these, guy? I think you point the phone at it. Yeah. And you hit a button. Okay. I don't know what button, but <laughs> you hit a button. So, so if you point a phone at these and you hit a button. You'll see me on YouTube. Okay. You'll see you on YouTube. Y-O-U-Tube. Yep. But I guess maybe Y-O-U wouldn't fit in there. I, I guess so. Interesting. It looks just like nothing to me. It looks like just yeah, a bunch of... They do that for everything now. Yeah. But we, uh, you know, I won that award, as you see right here. I know. Well, it's over there, isn't it? It's yep. It's on the wall. Yeah. And you see, this is a really nice big calendar. You can flip it over and use it as a placemat. Oh, whatever you I need. I think of everything. It's, you're so smart. You know, it's funny. I went to a restaurant recently, and uh, there's a tiny little card on the table, laminated, and it has one of these on it. And it says, you want to see our menu? Bring your phone out. Do Use that thing. We have no menus. I, I can see that, but the old timers like me, <laughs> I'm going to get up and go and leave. This was a fancy restaurant. Too. Yeah, this I'm going like, to get up and leave. You're not paying anything less than thirty to forty dollars a plate. Yeah, I, I remember years ago when my wife was a director of nursing for a cardiac group, and we had we ate at a rest. We, there was a, uh, a dinner put on by a drug company on the North Shore of Long Island, and we were at a restaurant, and the chef's name was Guy. 
but it was a fancy restaurant and everybody was in suits and ties, all the cardiologists and their nursing directors. And I had to wear a suit and tie and was sitting there eating. We had some cool hors d'oeuvres. I got a shrimp. A piece of shrimp was the size of a banana. What? Chili. It's gigantic. Got Chili prawn. and shrimp. I mean, they didn't give you cheese puffs. This wasn't piggies in a blanket and cheese puffs. But it was, it was one of those kinds of places. And what was interesting, you, uh, you know, they, they put on their, their spiel about what drugs are coming out and what to use. And the menu had no prices on it. Mm. You know you're in for it now. Yeah, if you have to ask, you yep. might as well leave. <laughs> Don't be here. <laughs> exactly. And that's, I think, the first time I ever sat down with it with no prices on the menu. And you got to pick from, a, well, there you got to pick from a few picks. But there were about 40 people there. I'll never forget that. That was, I thought that was pretty cool. Listen, guys, it's been a really, really good year. Been a great as, year. You know, you and I doing videos together. Yep. I mean, we did a bunch. We did quite a few. I think this is what, 75, 77? I don't know. Yeah. They got a whole playlist. Quite a few. Full of you and I doing these, so. I don't think we'll make 100 by the end of this year. Give us another, maybe two more years. Keep watching, right? Subscribe and stuff. Keep Why watching, we? exactly. So and, listen, uh, in 2024, um, as long as God willing, you know, we, we're still here. Can we keep on making videos? Absolutely. All Just right. don't come on a Wednesday. <laughs> don't come. I hate to tell you, I won't be here Wednesdays. I might do an uh, I might do uh, an appointment, but basically, I got to start cutting back. The wife wants to go places. I have to slow down a little. And um, like I said, it's getting to be the time. Well, you deserve. But it, I've enjoyed you doing it. Hard. I like teaching. I like t telling the kids what's going on in the world and giving them the gifts. And um, I'm looking forward to another year. Everybody have a well, have a happy Christmas and a great New Year's, and God bless America, God greatest bless country in the world. Amen. Amen. God, before we go though, mm -hmm. I want to mention your wife. So okay. Now, Susan did this right here, right? Yeah, she painted. This. I was looking at this. I'm trying to figure out how she did it. Did she sketch the owl first? It's a secret. She won't tell me. She won't tell you. You don't yeah. watch her do it. I don't watch it. She works at the kitchen table with the the dining room table. See, I'm just, secrets. I'm wondering, did she sketch the owl first and My then paint? My favorite one is that one. Which one? The one by the door. Let's go around the around the room real quick. Just listen, the video's over. You can stop watching, but this one right here? Yeah, I like that one. This one is very vivid. Bold colors. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. All your owls, guy. Yeah. Owls all around the room. Are you going to add some owls in 2024? I guess I'll try, but you know what? It's I need to, I got to find something that's in a different medium. Excuse me. Uh, at home, I have them in marble. I have them in bronze. I think I even have a couple of little gold ones. Anybody feel free to send me a big gold owl. It's okay. <laughs> um, pure only, right? Yeah, pure. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Yeah. What's what's your uh, New Year's resolutions? You have any of those? You haven't thought about it yet. It's I, too far. We'll see. I got to get new teeth. I'm getting new teeth. Yeah. The wife gives me a hard time. I get too many. I'm one of those people born with very soft teeth, and I'm getting new ones done. So the next year, I can smile more. Yeah. When I was six and seven years old, I had 14 cavities. It's never stopped. So it's time to. Uh, Do you have a sweet tooth. I just think it's bad. I don't know. It just... Uh, Got the genes. So I'm going to get the new teeth, get through that. I'll still be on the videos, but maybe I'll be, okay, it's wonderful. I don't know. We'll see. Any certain but, coin, like a, like a bucket list coin you just really would like to get? $17.94. You're still looking for that thing? I'm probably going to have to settle for the new one, but... Um, <laughs> That'll be enough. Yeah, I'm still looking for it. Got I it. got one coin I could trade for a nice good to VG in a 1794. But um, I hope you get it, man. I don't know. I've had them in my hand back in 95, but they wanted twice gray sheet then. And they were cleaned and scratched and couldn't, they wanted $11,000 for them. I was willing to pay 5500 but just wasn't there. These things were AGs and they were damaged. Man. But even those are worth 40000 now. Well, Who knew? Maybe in 2024. Maybe in 2024. Well, guy, I'll let you go. It's uh, getting dark outside because of this stinking time change they decided yeah. to keep doing. But, uh, yeah, 2024 is uh, upon us. and uh, Happy New Year to everyone. It's been a pleasure. Merry Christmas. Thank Happy you, New Year to you and your family. You too. Merry Christmas.
God bless. Amen. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. You know, when I was a kid, we did this every day in school, and I believe we need to bring this back a little bit, and I'm going to start right now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.